we hail. Hello from Hollywood. This is C.P. McGregor speaking and welcoming you to another performance of your War Department program, Proudly We Hail. With the cooperation of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, we present Mr. Preston Foster as the star of our show, The Three-Legged Bum, written by Richard Hall with music by Eddie Skrivanek. We're approaching Menifee Park, a small Midwestern racetrack in a rattletrap car belonging to Johnny Stark, the trainer. It's barely sun up and the morning air is crisp. Sitting beside Johnny is Pops Weaver, Johnny's stable hand. So you're taking the big step, eh, Johnny? Well, that's the general idea. <laughs> Betty was over at the barn yesterday showing off her ring. Never saw a girl so proud and so happy. Ah, uh, women are crazy that way. You've got to have everybody in town admiring it. Well, I don't know. Engagement ring's a little different than a hair ribbon. The only thing different about it is that it cost me 300 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're getting a mighty wonderful girl, Johnny. I watched her working over there in the restaurant. She stood out. Lots of class. But she can cook. Oh, how that girl can cook. Well, here we are, Pops. Yep. Hey, bring those new day sheets, will you? Okay, Johnny. <laughs> hey, listen to that raven, will you? He just waits. I swear that horse just waits for you to get down in the morning. Well, he's my friend. Hey, raven, we're coming, boy. Hey, big stuff. Hello, big man. Hey, easy there. Take it easy. You big bum. You three-legged bum. <laughs> Hold his head a minute, Pops. Okay. I want to see how that leg looks. Any fever, Johnny? Not a bit. And look, Pop, the swelling's all gone, too. You big moose. Nine horses in the barn, and I have to spend all my time with you. He's gonna run again, Pops. He's gonna do a lot of running. Yeah, I hope you're right. We'll say I never seen a high bow tenant come around like this one. Yeah, and how do you like it? The old man wants to get rid of him. Well, the old man has a point. Horse with a bow tenant is like a sick calf. You got a wet nurse him night and day, and still you can't be sure. Don't say that. This horse is gonna run again. We're careful. You beat them all, didn't you, Raven? He's a lot of horse, this one. He was a lot of horse. And he will be again. All right, get him out of there. You got a boy coming up? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna let him run a little bit today. See how that leg stands up. Hello, darling. Hey, look out. You want that horse to step on you? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, son. Oh, ho, oh, son. Hi, Pops. Well, uh, hello, Betty. What are you doing down here anyway? You know I'm busy. Well, I... I just came down to remind you about the house trailer. Now, listen, honey. I've got the money in my pocket. I'm going to go looking for a trailer as soon as I get through here this morning. Catch on? Yes, sir. And scoot. Clear out of here. Yes, sir. Hey, wait a minute. What in the world did you do to your hair? Why, uh... I only fixed it this way because I thought you'd like it. You thought right. I do. Come here, blue eyes. Oh, sour puss. Now, you clear out of here. I got work to do. Yes, sir. And don't forget about that trailer. Bye, darling. Bye, honey. Bye, Pop. Hey, bye, Betty. Say, uh, I couldn't help overhearing what you said about a trailer, Johnny. A fella in town named O'Brien's got one for sale. It's a uh, honey. All right, all right. We'll look at it later. Here's the boy now. Let's get down to the track. He's a flying. Three eights. Thirty six and three. <laughs> Not bad for a three legged bum, eh, Pops? Yeah. Uh, he didn't seem to be favoring his leg at all. Say, uh, there's the old man walking this way. Mm hmm. Get Raven up to the barn, will you, Pop? See how he pulled up. Okay. Hello, Johnny. Morning, Mr. Saunders. Raven? That's right. I worked him this morning. Worked very good, too. Three eights, thirty six and three. Yeah? Well, Tommy's up to a race. Oh, no, not yet, Mr. Saunders. You've got to be awful patient with a bow. Yeah? 
Johnny, was there a fellow named Sloan up to look at that horse? Yes, sir. I told him he wasn't for sale. You did? I don't like the way Sloan treats horses. I'm sure if you knew him the way I do, you wouldn't want your horses to go to him. Well, he could claim the horse when he runs. Sure he could. But when this horse is ready, he's not going to run in any $500 claimer. Now, look, Johnny, there's a claiming race for this horse this afternoon. You know I want to get rid of him. So put him in it. You don't mean that, Mr. Saunders. He isn't ready. You're liable to cripple this I horse. I said and he... put him in it. You're paying the bills, Mr. Saunders. Our story, The Three-Legged Bomb, starring Preston Foster, continues in just a moment, following an important message from Dr. W.G. Lutner, president of the Western Reserve University at Cleveland, Ohio. I was glad to see Congress extend the educational privileges of the G.I. Bill of Rights to young men who enlist in the regular army today. These privileges make it possible for many qualified young men who might not be able to afford higher education now to receive education as a reward for their service in the regular army. After serving a three-year enlistment, it is entirely possible for a man to complete his college work for both his bachelor's and master's degrees, with the government paying for tuition and books, plus an adequate monthly sum for living expenses. This program should be the means of helping give this country the kind of regular army it requires, and also of helping to improve the educational standards of our future generation. The latter is an absolute necessity if we are to keep pace with the post-war world. Skill in technology is important, but it will not save us in the atomic age. We must apply the knowledge which the social sciences, art, literature, ethics, philosophy, and religion supply if we are to preserve the traditional moral values which alone will hold the world together. Full details of the opportunities that await every eligible young man by joining the regular army are available at your nearest army recruiting station. Act two of The Three-Legged Bum, starring Preston Foster as Johnny Stark. Johnny paces up and down the small room adjoining the barn, which serves as his office, as Pops Weaver enters. I'm getting fed up with that two-bit hard-hearted... Johnny! Johnny, what's the matter? Well, what do you want? Well, I just wanted to tell you, Raven pulled up sounds a dollar. Yeah, we saw the horse. Uh-oh. Old man decided to run him today? That's right. And he isn't ready, Pops. The man's crazy to run him. Well, it's his horse. Yeah. Uh, say, Johnny, I think we better... Well, we got time to run into town and look at that trailer, huh? The what? Why, the house trailer Betty was talking oh, about. Oh, all right, later, later. Pops, you got any dough? Well, I got about five bucks here, but well, Give I... me it. Let me see. There's uh, 20, 30, 40, 50, 200, 290, 400. Pops, I need 100 bucks. For what? I'm going to buy a raven. Now, wait a minute, Johnny. You're not going to use the money for that house trailer? I'm going to buy that horse. But what about Betty? In the way you have to move around, she's got to have a home. Later. Pops, get out and hustle me up a hundred bucks. Johnny, that's a pretty tall order. Well, put the bee on somebody. But, Johnny, I don't know... Get it. I'm going down to the secretary's office and scratch that horse. Uh, well, here you are, Johnny. Count it. Thanks, Pops. Uh-oh. Looks like you brought it just in time. Uh, what do you mean? Hello, Pops. Oh, uh, howdy, howdy. Johnny? Yes, Mr. Saunders? Who scratched my horse out of that race today? I did. You did? On whose authority? On the authority of the new owner. Here. Well, where'd you ever get 500 bucks to throw away on a racehorse? I've got a rich uncle I never told you about, Mr. Saunders. He likes horses. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he likes them. And he has a good memory. Well, he remembers once where a fella claimed a horse for only 6,000 bucks. A little horse named Seabiscuit. Yeah. Johnny, you know, I always told my friends you'd be a good hand in this business. If you weren't so sentimental. Uh, if you want to stop over in the morning and we'll settle up for whatever you've got coming. That suits me just fine. Well, Raven's yours, Johnny. Now I 
think I better go talk to Betty. Hello, Blue Eyes. Hello, darling. Now, uh, let me hold your hand a minute. Mm -hmm. Betty, I've got something to tell you. Yes? What is it, dear? Well, you see, uh... Mm-hmm. Uh, you're, uh, you're not gonna have that trailer, uh, uh, not for a while yet. Johnny, I know all about it. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. Where's that ring I gave you? Well, I, um... Uh-oh. Uh, well, darling, Pops came over to try to get me to talk you out of it. He couldn't raise the money anywhere. <sighs> oh, blue eyes. I kind of love you. Oh, Johnny... I don't know what kind of a bargain you're getting. A three-legged bum and me. That's all in the world I want. I hope you've enjoyed our proudly we hailed story starring Preston Foster. Before leaving you, I'm pleased to present Lieutenant General Raymond A. Wheeler, Chief of Engineers, United States Army. General Wheeler. When we raced through the air in a jet-propelled plane at the speed of sound, when we project into the ionosphere on pillars of fire a 10-ton rocket at 3,000 miles an hour, when we blast this world with awesome tests of atomic power, the time has come to look to the responsibilities imposed upon us by all these marvels which can build the peace or destroy the people. Our amazing scientific developments have so contracted time and distance in the world that never again will our people have the opportunity to plan and to gather strength before the forces of evil strike. Forever on, we must be vigilant of our freedom. That vigilance must be built of such force that any aggressor will think twice before committing himself to attack. The American people must face the facts. We must have an army large enough to clean up the debris of war, to support administrative supervision of former enemy countries until they prove themselves fit to resume a place in the Brotherhood of Nations, to bring hope to millions of confused and hunger-ridden people. These assignments demand men of strong grain and enduring patience. To fulfill a mission which the American people have given to the Army, we are now engaged in the recruitment of 1,550,000 volunteers, the number determined necessary to achieve success in supporting our international commitments. What finer future is there than the opportunity of helping to rebuild the world? than being a part of the wonders to come in this scientific age. This year, thousands of young men all over the country will be graduated from high schools and colleges. Before making a final decision about the future, I urge every young man of eligible age to investigate the opportunity America's new regular army offers for technical training and education. Thank you, General Wheeler. Our thanks also to Dr. Lutner and Mr. Preston Foster for appearing in this program. Proudly We Hail will come to you again over this station next week. Listen in. Uh -huh.